Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to use Atlas CI to analyze your qualitative data. But in this case, I'm going to also show you how to use AI function in Atlas CI to analyze your data. Let's assume that we are doing a new project. You click on new project and then you type the name of the project, you click on create. Now you have your project here. The first step is to import your document. So you go to home tab and then you click on add document and then you click on add files and you look for your document. So in this case, I have my five participant document here. I have everything here, right? So imagine you want to analyze your data using AI function. You can use Atlas CI to do that. And I just want to give you the tools so that you'll be able to use it in an ethical way and understand the implications of using this function. If you want to use AI, there are many options, right? So when you go to search and code, there are about three options here for you, right? You can use AI coding, you can use intentional AI coding, or you can let AI to summarize your data. All these three functions are based on the open AI model, which is ChatGPT. So this means that this system is using ChatGPT model, the current one, which, which is um, GPT-4, to help you to automatically code your data or automatically summarize your data. So this is how you're going to do it. There are three options here. AI coding, you can use that by clicking on AI coding and then you select your document that you want the AI to code for. You can select one of them or you can select all of them, right? When you select once that you are selected, it will be on your right side. Then you go to start coding. So this is what is happening. Your document will be uploaded into OpenAI system for it to process, right? So if you agree to this arrangement, you check agree and then start coding. I like this function because it's telling you where your documents are going to. If you want to allow AI to code your data, right? You can also click on the license agreement so that you learn more about it. But this is how it is. You check and then you go to start coding. Now it has finished coding and it's giving you a preview. So there's a little limitation about this AI coding function. It doesn't take into consideration your purpose of the study or your research question. It just goes through and identify recurring information or dominant information that it sees and then call them for you. So you always have to be aware of the limitations of using AI coding. I think the good thing about this one is that you have an option to review the calls and take the ones that you want. So you can see here that all these are the calls that have been created. So you can decide, I don't want this code. I don't want that code, right? So you review and then call them. You cannot change the code name. You can change it after you have coded or after the system has coded. But what you can do is to eliminate some of the codes that you are not interested in. This system is good when you don't have any specific research question. You just want to explore the data and see the kinds of codes that comes up and maybe get an idea about the kinds of code that you want to use to code your data. So this is useful, but as I said, it has a limitation and you have to be aware of the limitations. Another thing is that it has codes and categories. Under the categories, it has code. And this is where it's not all that clear to me, right? It said 38 codes and 33 categories. So it looks like all these are categories and the things under the categories are codes, right? But it looks like the number of codes, they also counted the category as part of the number of codes. So it's a little bit confusing, but one thing that you just have to notice is that you have your codes here and you can review, you can take some out. And if you don't like the names, you can always change when you finish creating the codes. When you are done, you can go to apply 
And then this is what you can see. It has given you a summary about information that has been coded. These are the extract or significant information that was coded. 19 significant information were coded. 33 codes were developed and from five documents. And these are the number of significant information that are attached to a specific code. So seven significant information, seven significant information here for stress and also burnout, work-life balance is four. So as I said, this is good when you want to get an idea about the kinds of codes you can use manually or you want to code in general without thinking about maybe a specific objective for the study or the research question. This function is very good for you to use. When you are done, you click on done. And then as you can see here, when you go to codes, you see all the codes that has been created here. In terms of groups, it has only one group and under that we have a code. So the good thing is that it indicates to you that it's an AI code. Let's say if you have done manual coding, the codes that has been developed will be very different from what you have, or you can differentiate between the uh, AI codes and also the one that you have coded. So this is what I can give you. Uh, let's say you want to change some of the labels for the codes, you can right click and go to rename, and then you can give a different name, maybe parental demand, right? If that's what you want. And then you click on rename, and you see that you see the name has changed. So you can always change the names after the coding. So this is what I have concerned AI coding. Now we're going to go to intentional coding, and I want it to be a little bit separate, so I'm going to create a new project, and then we use for intentional coding. So. Let me create a new project. So I go to new and then project name, I can say burnout projects. So I have it here. So now I'm going to use, when I go to search and code, I'm going to use intentional coding, but I have to at first upload the transcript. So I go to home. And I go to add documents and add file. And I look for my transcripts. Select all of them, open all of the transcripts are here. So now we go to search and code, and then we go to intentional coding. The good thing about intentional coding is that it solves the limitation that we have concerning the AI coding. AI coding doesn't take into consideration the research question or the purpose of your study. You just go ahead and code based on the recurring information or dominant information or the patterns that it sees in the data, right? Intentional coding, I like the name to intentional AI coding. It's coding based on the research question that you have or the research question that the system has suggested or you have asked, right? So I really like the intentional coding because as I said, it solves the problem that is being created by AI coding. So the intentional coding, we you click on that and you check the uh, transcript that or the document that you want a system to code for you. So let's check all the documents, right? And you go to next. This is interesting. So this is what you're going to see. Don't worry about this one. Based on the interaction you have, you have your history here, all the interaction that you have with the system, all then your intentions will be at the history here. Let's say you are starting new, you have to type your intention. So intention is all about stating the purpose of your study. You can also state your research question, right? And then the system will review and suggest the research question that is going to use to go through the data and develop codes for you. You can state the purpose of your study and research question, or maybe objective of the study, or only the purpose of the study. I already have my research question here and the purpose of my study. So let me put the purpose of my study here. But the purpose of the study is to explore the causes and solutions of burnout from the perspective of primary healthcare physician in the US, right? That's my purpose. It's optional, but you can also add your research question. The system can look at your purpose of the study and develop research questions for you. If you want to be more specific, you can state your research questions also here so that the system can provide that for you, right? So I have my purpose and I've stated my research question. When you are done, you click on next 
And here again, the system is telling you that it will be sending your document to the OpenAI system for ChatGPT to process that information. If you agree, you click on next. It's now extracting questions based on the information that you are provided. So you see how that is so powerful. Based on the purpose of the study and the research question, it has restated the research question for me and also giving the label for the research question. So if you have listened to concerning my previous presentation, always you have to label your research question. Now it has suggested a research question for you if you didn't provide research question. And then if you don't like the research question, you can turn it off, right? And then add your own question, right? If you like it, you turn it on, right? So you can add your own question. You can add more questions. You always have options to add questions, right? When you are done, you go to start coding. So the system will start coding the information for you. In terms of even the name for the categories, you can always change the name if you don't want the name of the categories that, that the system has provided to you, right? So you see that we have causes of burnout and solutions for burnouts, right? These are the two categories representing each of the research question. And as you can see, if we click on this arrow, you have all the information about the causes of burnout. Similar to AI coding, you can always turn someone off and on if you don't want it to appear as a code. But you see here that it says two categories and 19 codes. Then it also has significant information that was extracted from the data in connection to the codes that you have. You can also review them if you want to. If you are satisfied with what the system has suggested, I think you can also click on this for a graph. Wow. You can click on this one and it will show a graph. And it shows that these are the two categories. You can click on it and see what is happening. These are the courses and all these are the codes that comes out of the courses. This is fascinating. This is so interesting. These are the solutions and these are the codes that are connected to the solutions. Perfect, right? So you can always click on it and see that information and read about that, right? In terms of information that was extracted from the data. So let's go back to the list, right? You can see the list here. If you're okay, we can click on apply. So when you click on apply, you can see that the five documents were analyzed, 19 codes were developed from 16 quotations, information that was extracted. And these are the frequency, the number of significant information that are connected to each of the codes. So now when you look at the codes, you can see which research question is addressing, right? So this is truly a game changer. It's really doing a good job. And also you have an option. You always can review and make the necessary corrections if you don't want some of the information that has been provided. When you are done, you click on done. And then you can go to codes. You see that two codes based on the research question that we have here. And under that, we have all the codes and the first research question and then codes and the second research question. As I said, you can always delete if you don't want it or rename it, right? So you can always do that. And so this is all about the intentional coding. You can also go further and do the grouping similar to what I've done manually. You can export a code book and then categorize the codes and to develop themes under each of the research question. When I look at my previous videos, you'll be able to do that. Let's go to the last one, which is also AI function, which is AI summaries. So the AI summaries function, it, it just helps you to summarize some of the information, especially when you want to get the main ideas about what participants were saying. You can easily check each of them and run it, or you can check all of them, right? So I can check all of them and ask the system to summarize. Here too, it always reminds you that, okay, do you agree that your information is being sent to OpenAI for them to process it for you? You click on summarize and then the system will summarize that information for you. So you see how it has summarized each of them 
you can click and see each of the information is being summarized. It will be added to memos. So whenever you go to memos, you see the summaries there. When you click on done and we go back to memos, you're seeing the summary for each of the participant. You can double click and then you can see the summaries, right? So this is so good. I'm so happy that they have incorporated AI into the system and you still have control. You are leading the data analysis. It's not like the AI is doing everything for you. You have to review, making sure that everything is right. You can make sure that the information that you are gathering are addressing the research question. So this is what I have about the AI function. And if you have any question, contact me or you can put in the comment session and I'll be happy to address them for you. So thank you for your time.